So my name is Gregor Helenda. I am a photographer. I'm based up in Portland, Oregon. And this bike is my interpretation of a custom vintage uh, adventure bike, but not vintage performance, modern performance with vintage looks. So it's a BMW R100 GS kind of. A lot of parts have been changed. Almost everything has been changed. Um, and it's definitely not the standard old GS. It's a lot different, um, but it's a lot of fun to ride. I've been building off and on for about 20 years. And um, this bike <clears throat> I found on Bike Curious. Uh, I thought it was a pretty amazing job. A fella in Canada fabricated the tanks. There's three tanks. This is a monocoque subframe. And I thought it was really cool, but I had inherited my father's GS and didn't really want to buy it. And um, I ended up talking to the fellow who ended up buying it and he couldn't get it registered and he was having a lot of problems with it burning oil and just a bunch of issues and he wanted to get rid of it. And I thought, well, for what he was asking, it was worth it for the gas tanks. So I immediately drove down to San Francisco and picked it up. And then I've spent the last year basically sort of fixing and sussing it out. Um, at this point, the only things that I haven't replaced are the tanks. And I've modified the tanks, the exhaust. Um, I've modified the frame, fully replaced the engine. All the suspension and all the wheels are all brand new. The handlebars, the controls, everything. So it's a completely different bike now. Um, and my goal was to really to make it work. And I've pretty much gotten to that point. It, if you get on it, it feels like a, basically like a 950 or maybe a heavy KTM 500 or a 690. It's about 400 pounds, making about 75 at the rear wheel. And um, it works really well. It started as a regular GS. Um, the frame was modified to lift the engine up for better clearance and um, I sort of tipped it up a little bit more by virtue of the the forks and the suspension that I chose. Uh, the engine is an R100 RS which is um, in terms of the older airhead engines it's the one with the biggest valve so it flows the best and it makes the most horsepower. Um, I replaced the bings with electrons and of course changed the suspension. Woody's did the wheels for me and they make a huge difference. BMW traditionally uses a 17 inch rear wheel. And if you ride dirt bikes, you know, there's really no choices in 17s. Um, so I went to an 18 and that required cutting out all of the, the swing arm here and repositioning the pivot in, in order to get the clearance. So now we're running a golden tire uh, 723R the Desert Rally tire in a 140-80-18, and then a fatty front, uh, same, same tire, but up front, the fatty, the 90-100-21. And the reason you want to go to those tires is that they're a rounder profile when squeezed on a narrow rim. So it's uh, 165 and uh, 185 in the back. So that squeezes the tire, gives you a really round profile, and that really changes the handling because the bike wants to drop into corners a lot. And um, it's 450 SX triples, and that helped to bring the forks back a little bit. And again, it quickened the steering. So a lot, every, all of the changes are about trying to make the bike handle and feel unlike an old BMW. We had a really good time this morning. It was awesome meeting Gregor. Uh, we'd followed his adventures over the last uh, year or so building this bike and seeing all the hand-built parts that he put into this. And yeah, true honor to be able to make this connection and be able to ride this motorcycle. It is a surprisingly good motorcycle. It, I was blown away riding this. Um, to me, I'm a big fan of BMW GSs and the Boxer motor. Um, they're fantastic motorcycles and they're just something really special about the way that engine works. 
However, it is a big motorcycle and it seems to be getting larger. Um, and to me, the 800 BMW, the parallel twin, um, really kind of you lose a little bit of the BMW flair going away from the, the boxer engine. So super cool to ride this motorcycle, which is basically a scaled down GS with some really cool GS heritage, the boxer engine, but in a scaled down, smaller, lighter chassis. And it honestly feels like a KTM 690 or 701, but with more motor behind it. Um, we rode it out here in some cool sand dunes and some little rocky trails. So the handling of the motorcycle is very impressive. For the size of the engine that's in it, the bike is surprisingly nimble and turns really well. The front suspension holds the bike up in its travel really well, gives you the confidence to hit rocks. Uh, the rear may be a little bit soft, it felt like it blew through the stroke a little bit at times, but that's being super picky. It's just really amazing to me that like all this technology exists, this engine is as old as I am, and that it's really kind of taken this long to put this package together where we get this really good off-road adventure bike. Um, in a lot of ways, this is probably like a, the new KTM 790s, shares a lot of the same kind of heritage. It's got the off-road DNA, the modern suspension, but it has a twin cylinder engine in it, which really, in my opinion, is like the formula us adventure bike riders have been searching for for so long. Um, a bike that's capable off-road, but it can also go on-road, uh, ride down the highway at 80 miles an hour. So yeah, just a huge honor to be out here spend some time on this motorcycle and um, yeah, really kind of put it through its paces and um, appreciate it for uh, what it is. The next step for me is, is um, to build the next bike. And I thought that inheriting my father's GS with 292,000, I couldn't start with a worse platform than a bike that was beat to death, absolutely trashed. So, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see once I get a YouTube channel up, I'll pretty much document the entire process. So a lot of the things that I've done on the bike, I will talk about. Um, why changing geometry up front, uh, what I'm doing to the geometry in the, in the back. A lot of things that my years of racing have taught me about how to fabricate and build a bike that works. So I kind of want to talk about that and then just a little about my philosophy on riding and adventure riding too. So Instagram for now, you can look me up on my name on uh, YouTube and hopefully within a few weeks, I'll, I'll have a video up for that. And then we'll start to see the process of the next bike come into, into creation.